You can grab it, brother. You can hold it. You can hold it, but it shouldn't lick. It shouldn't lick you. You grab him by the neck and take him out. I got a hold of it. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستهديه ونسترضيه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذريته ومن دعا بدعوته واتبع سنته وسار على دربه واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا أما بعد brothers and sisters in Islam this is the first Friday in the new Islamic year the Hijri year year 1446 and this is the month of Al-Muharram the first month of the Islamic year and Hijra this reminds us with Hijra though Hijra happened in like the Hijra of the Prophet happened in the month of Rabi'a al-Awwal. And Muslims did not have, and the Arabs did not have any calendar. So they wouldn't write the year. They know the names of the month, but they wouldn't write the year. And if you, they want to mention, to say something happened in, in, a, in a certain year, they would relate it to a great event, something which happened and everyone is aware of. And until today, when you ask someone which year the Prophet ﷺ was born, he will say he was born in the year of the elephant. The year of the elephant because that was, was a major ev ev event which took the attention of everyone in the Arabia. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his, the, the birds in groups to throw stones at the army with the elephant who went to demolish al Kaaba. So that's how their life was. Until people forget about the elephant, then a big fire happens or a big flood happens. And then they will relate what happens to the, flood, the fire or to the flood. And when Muslims, <coughs> after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu had two years and a little bit more, and then Umar Radiallahu it was at the time of Umar when the Muslim state settled down, when they needed to have formal writing, formal messaging and correspondence. So Umar anhu would send messages to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari anhu, another one who's ru another ruler, someone who's ruling over Egypt or over Asham or over Iraq. And Umar is in Medina. He needed, they needed to write the year next to the month. Otherwise, this correspondence will, will mix up, will be confusing. When they write in Sha'ban, which is Sha'ban? This year, the year before, the coming year. So, Muslim, Umar radiallahu anhu, he had an assembly with the, he has this shura with the companions. They needed to have a calendar. Which event to take it as the beginning of this calendar? Which day, which month, which year should be the beginning of the calendar? And then everyone gave his opinion. Some said the, the Battle of Badr. And yes, the Battle of Badr was Yawm al-Furqan. It's the day of criterion, the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Muslims full support in that battle. Some uh, suggestions could be the, the Ba'tha, the day the Prophet وسلم, or the year the Prophet was made a prophet. Some uh, other opinions were given, but Umar anhu chose the Hijrah of the Prophet Why? Because Hijrah of the Prophet وسلم, was a milestone, was a cornerstone, was a big change in Muslims' history, in Muslims' life. Their life after Hijrah was totally different to their life before Hijrah. Hijrah was a, a, an event where every Muslim sacrificed. 
And that's the most important thing. Everyone is represented in that one. So everyone sacrificed, everyone did a part, and the Prophet ﷺ led all to start a new state in Medina. In Mecca, Muslims were fully persecuted. They were persecuted. They were not able to pray in Jama'ah. They were not able to call Adhan. There was no Adhan. Because there is no point, point to say there is Adhan and no one is able to call the Adhan. They were not able, even a, per, a Muslim wouldn't be safe if he says he is Muslim. Or practices Islam. Everyone was harmed so much in, in the time of Mecca. Then, when they moved to Medina, it was not actually also, it was, the change did not happen overnight. So they kept sacrificing for a while, until we, said, we just said, they settled at the time of Umar. So maybe 15 years after Hijrah or so, when they had some rest, when they had some, when they were able to, to think of how to build a state with all the bureaucratic structure and order. So that's how it was. In Mecca, that's what we need when we say the Hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ is a major event in the history of Islam altogether. Then we need to learn some lessons of how that was made, how that took place. We need to learn lessons how to change our status quo. We need to change our circumstances. If our circumstances are so bad, if our water is so stagnant, not moving, we need to move the water. We need to change the circumstances around us so that we can build ourselves a, a good Muslim community. That's the first lesson we learn. And how this should happen, we need to learn from the history of the Prophet ﷺ, from the Sirah. In Mecca, as we said, you wouldn't be safe to say, to read an ayah of Quran. Once Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he recited the Quran loudly. He was smacked, you can say he was smashed. He was hurt violently in Mecca. People were so aggressive on him. One day Abu Bakr anhu, was hit by everyone in Mecca. Abu Bakr is such a loved person. People love him. Before becoming a Muslim, he was such a beloved person. He had his own status. He was a businessman. He was a wealthy person. He had people working for him. However, that did not give him any protection against the ignorance, violence, aggression of the people of Mecca. So one day he was talking in, in favor of the Prophet He was hit from everywhere that after, after they finished, you couldn't tell on his face which one is his nose and which one is, uh, is his eyes. It was just a piece of, a piece of flesh. Born. That's how much he was hit. No one had doubt he died. And the moment he recovered, the moment he spoke, the first word he said, Ma fa'ala Rasulullah. What happened to the Prophet? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's one example. We always remember what happened to Bilal, to Ammar, to his mother, to his father, to his family. And yes, they suffered a lot. Khabbab bin Arat is someone, when he mentioned the old days before, before Hijrah, he needed only to show you his, uh, his, his back. Years, years afterwards. After this happened, years later, if he shows you his back, you just find the scars, fire scars, burning scars on his, on his back. He was, literally he was barbecued by the people of Mecca. And the only thing which put the fire off would be his body. And when he came to the Prophet wasallam. Selling, asking him, Oh, Messenger of Allah, Allah Why didn't you ask Allah to give us his victory, his support? The Prophet will say to him, You are just rushing matters. You are just rushing. Things take time. It takes time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his plans over the time of the whole world, of the universe, not all your own time. So the plans of Allah, of success, of victory, of support. It shouldn't or it may not happen in your own lifetime. The great success for Muslims, it all happened after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. He didn't see Muslims when they were conquering Baytul Maqdis. He didn't see Muslims when they were knocking down the thrones of Kisra and Qaisar, the two great superpowers of the time. 
Musa, radiallahu anhu, Musa alayhi salam, and Harun, they did not see their own people when they were entering Bayt al-Maqdis. Musa died ala marma hajar in Bayt al-Maqdis. He died at the distance of a stone throw to Bayt al-Maqdis. So he did not enter Bayt al-Maqdis. He was so close. But his, the people whom he educated, the people whom he grew up to Islam, to sabr, patience, perseverance, they are the people who did this great victory. So that's a lesson we learn. You just need to be a brick in the big wall of Islam. You just need to be a link in the big chain, which, which is making these great events <laughs> and you'll be rewarded for that. So the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca, they, they had a plan, a long plan, long-term plan, a strategy to change the circumstances. But the Prophet ﷺ had to work hard and invest on, his, on, on, on the Muslims. So the Quran was coming down and the Prophet was educating them. The Quran, if you refer to the Quran, Mecca Quran, it's all about building a strong Muslim character. A strong Muslim man and woman who are ready to sacrifice, who are ready to persevere, who will be patient, and who will not run away and leave their cause at the nearest chance or at the nearest test. So that's how, life, how their life was. The Quran was coming down, telling the Prophet and the Muslims, Indeed, we give full support and victory to our messengers and to the believers in this life and in the hereafter life. Indeed, we have sent messengers before you to their people. So they came to them with clear proofs. They did not believe, they denied them. So what, what, what happened? Allah said, we, we sought revenge from the disbelievers. And it is due upon us, always due upon us, to give victory to the believers. So Allah said that. Allah told them what happened to Musa, what happened to people of Nuh, people of Hud, people of Saleh. That was a lesson for Muslims and for the non-Muslims. You are doing this, so what happened to people before you will inflict you. What happened to you? When they were negotiating, when al walid al-Mughira, this one is one of the most senior people, if, he, if he's not the, the most of the people of Mecca. When he was negotiating with the Prophet ﷺ, he was trying to make a deal with him. To stop us, to stop preaching Islam and talking to people about Islam. The Prophet said to him, Did you finish? Yes. The Prophet just recited to him this ayat of Surah Al Silat. Until he reached, فَإِنْ أَعْرَضُوا فَقُلْ أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ صَاعِقَةً مِثْلَ صَاعِقَةِ عَادٍ وثمود. If they turn away from you, give them the warning, a notice of warning of what? Of a disaster. Like that which inflicted the people of Ad and people of Thamud. The man was so scared, he said to the Prophet, and shuduk Allah wa rahim. I ask you, by the, in the name of Allah, and by the kind relationship between us and you, to stop proceeding. We don't want to listen to this. Why? He was so scared. He's giving you notice that this big disaster is soon. But he did not stop. He insisted on his injustices. Anyway, that's one, preparing a man and a woman, a good Muslim person who is really, who is ready to persevere. That's how this should happen, by the Quran, by the example, the Prophet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You should know that Muslims were besieged in the Sha'b, Sha'b of Abu Talib. It's a valley, a small valley between mountains. They were besieged. A siege was laid on them similar to that one which is laid to the people of Gaza now. So it's not the, the idea of today. 
similar things happened to the Prophet Sallallahu and the Muslims. So there in that place in the valley, in the Sha'b of Abu Talib, they lived together because no one was allowed to sell to them or buy from them or marry anyone from them or marry anyone to them. No one was, able, was allowed to, uh, to, to socialize with them. You can ask how they survived. They survived on the least, on the least a human could survive on. Sa'd ibn Abu Qas radiallahu anhu said, one day he was urinating. It's like, it's a valley, it's a mountain. Like, like you are in open space, somewhere. So his urine dropped on a, a piece of his skin. So he heard the crack. He picked it up. It was a skin of a dead animal, of a dead camel, which he's just urinating on. He took it somewhere, washed it, and he heated it on fire and ate it. And he wondered what would make a person eat this other than starving to death. Starving to death. How these people survived, it is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which he puts in the hearts even of non-believers. Even non-believers. Some people would so, like even the kuffar. And that's, a, uh, that's one of the manifestations of the mercy of Allah. That you see mercy coming from an unbeliever to a believer. From an enemy, from an enemy to his other enemy. So they would load camel at night. Load, some camels would be loaded with food and sent to the, to the shaq where Muslims live. And Muslims will share that food together. So... That was the sanctions, the idea of sanctions on Muslims from that day for three years. At the end, the sanctions were lifted and Muslims were free. And they survived by the permission and by the will and power of Allah. And they got the huge reward. And as Allah said, للمتقين, the final destiny is for the believers. We learn a lesson from here when you look at our brothers of Gaza. Actually, this is a lesson for them. The lesson for us is we have to sacrifice to change their circumstances. And we have to do our best. <coughs> Brothers, the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims in Medina, as we said, they work to change this. The Prophet ﷺ would offer Islam to every person around. Anyone who, whom he can reach, he would uh, offer Islam to. So he will talk to people as Nuh ﷺ said, he talked to his people at day and at night, in private and in public, to a person, one by himself, and to a group together. All the techniques used by the prophets before him, he used them, he learned from the Quran. He used them. What happened? They just turned away from him. The Prophet ﷺ talked to people, to the visitors of Mecca. Mecca Kaaba, where, where Kaaba is, that was visited by people to do Hajj, Hajj in the Jahiliyyah, that way, their own way, Hajj. So groups, delegations of the tribes, you can say yes, delegations, because every tribe, every tribe will have its own people and its own elite as well coming to do Hajj. The Prophet ﷺ was talking to them, offering Islam to them. Man yahmiluni uballigh da'wat rabbi. Who can give me a protection so that I can deliver the message of my Lord? He's looking for, for a modern day for a protection visa. Why? For the freedom of speech. He wants to talk to people about Allah, about the reality, about the, this life, about the hereafter life. So what happened? People of Quraysh, his own closest relatives, they, were, they made, they smeared him before he started. Because everyone knew about that there is the fact that there is a man from the people of Quraysh talking about Islam. Everyone from the outside tribes who live uh, uh, over the Arabia. So they told them beforehand, we had, we had such an insane person, mad person, who would be talking to you about something, a matter of religion which you never heard of. Do not listen to him. Do not listen to him. And they said to them, he had the power of magic. They said to the visitors about the Prophet ﷺ, that's when you read the Quran, in the Quran they say about him, Sahir, a magician. They said to them, he had the power of magic. You need to be careful about yourself. He will turn you against your father, against your brother, 
See how they are changing the narrative. Like today. They are telling people, look at Muhammad, because people who followed him, Muslims, because they chose the way of Islam, their own families disowned them. So they changed it over. They said Muhammad changed people against their own families. So they said, he will turn you against your families, against your father, against your mother, until such a wise man, a smart man, would enter Mecca with cotton, blocking his ears with cotton, so that he doesn't listen to Muhammad and be under the power of his magic. However, the Prophet ﷺ had to struggle, had to work hard to remove these veils on the eyes, to take these blocks out of the ears, and put the message right in the hearts of people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us hope. Because after years, after years, six people of uh, Medina, few people in the first year, few people of Medina, they listened to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how Allah was preparing the scene for these people to listen to Muhammad and understand and accept the message. <coughs> there in Medina, where these people live, they had Jews around. And there was always, always friction between themselves and the Jews. And the Jews would say to them, this is a time of a prophet coming from this land. We will follow him, believe in him, we will be with him against you. So people of Medina at that moment, they had been long also exhausted by war. Yeah. Inside war. Al-Aust and Al-Khazraj, who are now known as Al-Ansar, later known as Al-Ansar. They had been fighting for years. And they are actually cousins. Their forefathers are brothers, Al-Aust and Al-Khazraj. So, what happened? They said, it's a chance. It's our chance to believe in this Prophet before the Jews, otherwise, it will be in their sight. They accepted the message. But they didn't give the Prophet ﷺ any word of protection, any pledge. <coughs> until they go back and ask advice from their own people. See, that's how it was. The Arabs at that time, they were not such dictators who would dictate what they believe, who would dictate their opinions on their followers. They need to look for other opinions as well. They went back to Medina. They, there was some sort of acceptance to the message of the Prophet ﷺ. In the year after, that's the year before Hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ, Six people came to Medina and, and gave the Prophet their pledge of Islam. They gave him the pledge of Islam. Pledge of Islam means they are committed to the rulings of Islam. That's the minor pledge, which is known as the women pledge to Islam. Because a women pledge doesn't include fighting and defending the Prophet and sacrificing their lives for the Prophet And then the year after, until when this happened, the Prophet sent with them Mus'ab ibn Umayr. And he was such a successful da'i. He was such a successful da'i. In one year time, he did not leave a house in Medina whom he did not deliver the message of Islam to. Most of the people of Medina over that year accepted message, the message of Islam. And then they came to the Prophet ﷺ and the next year, which was the year only a few months after, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, did hijrah. Why? Because they gave him their word of protection. They will protect him. As they protected their families, their household members, their women and their children. And they know at the time what that means. It means that they will be, they will be targeted by all the Arabs together. And they did not care. They gave their word. And they paid the price of Jannah. Inna <laughs> أقول ما تسمعون أستغفر الله ولكم أستغفر الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وشهر لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وشهر أن سيدنا محمد رسول الله إمام المتقين اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذريته ومن دعا بدعوته واتبع سنته وسار على ضربه واكتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين Brothers and sisters in Islam, that's how, uh, that's the, how the hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ started. But to learn, there are a lot of lessons to learn. Maybe inshallah in the coming Jummah, we go further with more lessons to learn. 
But the most important thing is the Muslim character, the person, the man and woman. Because from the first day, women were next to men. Both of them were struggling and working together to build up the, the structure of Islam. From the very beginning, when the Prophet ﷺ received the message from Jibreel, the first one whom he delivered the message to was his wife Khadija, anha, and she accepted the message. And the first woman, as a, the first shaheed in the history of Islam was a woman. That's Ammar's mother, Sumayya, radiallahu anha. When she, when she actually, when she was suffering uh, until she was killed by Abu Jahl. So we need to learn this. In the people who, the group of people who came to give their pledge of uh, Islam to the Prophet they had women with them. They had women. The last one had like 70 plus men and two women. And they were there next to the Prophet in the battlefields fighting for Islam, helping the, the injured, the wounded. So they had a message and Islam's message is for everyone. For everyone, for the old, for the young, for those who are rich, for those who are poor. We have Abu Bakr, we have the other poor people, a lot of them. We have Uthman. We have Abu Bakr, the one who was very active in da'wah. Because once he accepted the message, and he, he is the one who accepted the message without hesitation. The Prophet said, I never show, presented Islam to anyone, except he showed that some hesitation. Only Abu Bakr who showed no hesitation. And we'll learn about Abu Bakr how he was second after the Prophet in so many occasions. So he is the first man to accept Islam after the Prophet. And he is the second one. The Prophet was the first one to call to Islam, and Abu Bakr was the second. And when Abu Bakr called people to Islam, you had the most or the biggest number of the ten giving good news of Jannah. They accepted Islam at the hand of Abu Bakr. He was with the Prophet ﷺ in Hijrah. He was even after death, he was next to the Prophet ﷺ in his grave. Abu Umar, when he was dying, people were giving him some reassurance on account of his past and his history of sacrifices to Islam. They said, I wish I had nothing of that, but I have only two, a night and day. So he doesn't care about all what he did. If he had only two, which are both a day and night, which are the days and nights of Abu Bakr. The night when he was next to the Prophet ﷺ in the cave, when Allah said, Thani idhuma fil When he was so worried that the kuffar who are chasing them, they actually, well, they were at the gate of the, of the cave. He said, Abu Bakr said to the Prophet, if one of them looked underneath his feet, he would have, they would have spotted us. The Prophet gave him reassurance. لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Don't worry, Allah with is with is with us. That is the night. And which one is the day? The day is when the Arabs, after the death of the Prophet, when the Arabs upstated, when the Arabs left Islam, and Omar himself, the one who is usually very strict, he said to he was trying to 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 soothe him, Abu Abu Bakr and say to him to soothe him and say to him. How come you will fight people who stay say la ilaha illallah? Yes, they said la ilaha illallah, but they denied zakah. Abu Bakr insisted on this. And if he did not do so, all the efforts done by Muslims, and by the Prophet and Muslims, would have been gone. <coughs> by, by doing that, Abu Bakr anhu, he stopped the beginning of rebellion in the Arabia. He brought all these people together against the outside enemy. And by that means, they started knocking down the great superpowers, as we said before. And Muslims settled down. And that's why how Umar never forgot that the credit for that day and night can never be matched. He can never, he can never, he, he tried his best, best all his lifetime to match Abu Bakr And always he comes after him. Wallahu dhul fadl al-azim. Inshallah we continue more on uh, and more lessons from Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu on the coming Friday. Nas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An yaj'alna wa iyaakum min al-ladhina yastamu'una al-qawla fa yastamu'una ahsanah. Allahumma aghfir lana ma qaddamna wa ma akharna wa ma asrarna wa ma a'lanna. 
وما أنت أعلم به منا أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر وأنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها وأنت نعم المولى ونعم النصير اللهم أكرمنا ولا تهنا اللهم أعطنا ولا تحرمنا اللهم ارفعنا ولا تضعنا اللهم اغفر لنا ولا تكن علينا يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وعبادك المؤمنين اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وعبادك المؤمنين اللهم انصر أهل غزة المستضعفين اللهم انهم كفاة فاحملهم، اللهم انهم عرايا فاكسهم، اللهم انهم مرضى فداوهم، اللهم انهم جوعى فاطعمهم، اللهم انهم مظلومون فانتصر لهم، اللهم انزل الكتاب، مجري السحاب، هازم الاحزاب، اللهم اهزم الاحزاب وانصرنا عليهم، اللهم اهزمهم وانصرنا عليهم، اللهم اهزمهم وانصرنا عليهم، اللهم اهزمهم وانصرنا عليهم، اللهم ثبت اقدام المجاهدين واربط على قلوبهم وافرغ عليهم من لدنك صبرا واجمعهم على كلمة سواء. اللهم سدد اللهم سدد رميتهم وصوب كلمتهم ووحد كلمتهم واجمعهم على الحق يا رب العالمين اللهم عليك بعدوك وعدوهم اللهم فرط جمع عدوهم اللهم شتت شملهم اللهم اجعل باسهم بينهم شديدا اللهم اجعل باسهم بينهم شديدا اللهم لا ترفع لهم رايه ولا تحقق لهم غايه واجعلهم يا ربنا عبره وايه عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه يزيدكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم واقيموا الصلاه